right, this is uh, chemistry chapter 13. You'll have your chapter 13 notes ready to go. The first on your own problem in the book that we're going to work is on page 420. So you can turn there. And you'll also need your table, chapter 13 tables, that sheet that has all those tables out and ready to go. All right, so starting at the top of your notes, this chapter is called thermodynamics. Thermodynamics just means moving heat. All right, we are following the path of heat in a chemical reaction. All right, dynamic just means motion. Thermo means heat. So just going through the notes real quick, uh, chemical changes either release or absorb energy. And an exothermic reaction energy is a product. So we're gonna we're gonna it's usually gonna be in kilojoules. All right, and we're gonna put it on the right side of the arrow. All right. Remember, in an exothermic reaction, heat is uh, generated and goes into the surroundings. So if uh, if you have an exothermic reaction, the surroundings get hotter. Whereas in, in an endothermic reaction, energy is a reactant. Your surroundings uh, will get colder. Okay, so like the, the uh, example we had of a cold pack, um, that's an endothermic reaction and, and the surroundings get colder with that. So in, again, energy is a reactant in an endothermic reaction. So the main concept of this chapter is called enthalpy and that is the energy stored in a substance. And enthalpy is really hard to measure, but it's not hard to measure the change in enthalpy, which we will call delta H. H is used to signify enthalpy. All right, so we can measure that by performing a, a chemical reaction in a lab and just measuring the change in temperature. Okay, and we all also have a lot of math uh, that we can do to measure a change in enthalpy. But, Change in enthalpy is usually measured as, as energy per mole, all right? So we're gonna do, your, a lot of your, your units will be kilojoules per mole. And delta H, or change in enthalpy, is positive for endothermic reactions and negative for exothermic reactions, okay? When energy is released to the surroundings, our, the math will show a negative number, all right? That doesn't mean negative energy, it's just a way to show uh, what side of the chemical reaction that uh, the delta H or the energy goes on. All right, let's look at on your own 13.1. Part A says, write the balanced chemical equation for the following processes, being sure to include energy as either a reactant or a product. So the formation of H2SO4. And it says delta H is negative 814. That means if it's negative, that means that it's exothermic and enthalpy is shown as a product. So if we're forming H2SO4, it will be on the right side of the arrow. And energy is a product, so 814 kilojoules. Again, you don't put negative eight to the negative sign in the problem tells you it's on the right side, all right? So how do you make a formation reaction? Well, you just take the individual components of H2SO4, those individual elements, and those are the reactants. So H2, hydrogen being a homonuclear diatomic, it has to be H2, plus sulfur, plus oxygen, also a homonuclear diatomic, so O2. We do have to balance, so we're gonna need to put a two right there, and now we are balanced, so that gets part A. Part B, the instructions are the decomposition of K3PO4, and delta H is 2,030 kilojoules. So if it's positive, that means it's a reactant. So we would put 2,030 kilojoules plus K3 
K3PO4, we're decomposing that, and you decompose it into its constituent elements. So that would be potassium by itself, not a homonuclear diatomic plus phosphorus, also not a homonuclear diatomic, and then oxygen, we have to write as O2. We need to balance it, so we'll put a three in front of potassium and a two in front of O2. Part C says the reaction between H2CO3 and KOH. And it says that it releases 21 kilocalories. If you release energy, that means it's exothermic. That 21 kilocalories will be on the right side. Okay, so H2CO3, carbonic acid, plus KOH, potassium hydroxide. So that is, if you'll think back to chapter 10, an acid plus a hydroxide base makes a salt plus a water. The salt is made out of the potassium and the carbonate. All right, so we'd have KCO3, the charge on potassium, potassium is in column one, so that's gonna be plus. CO3 is two minus, so after you switch, you'll have K2CO3, and then plus water, plus 21 kilocalories. Okay, we need to balance here, so we've got, uh, Let's see, we've got two potassiums there. I'm gonna try putting a two there. So that'll give me, we have one carbonate. I have four hydrogens, so I think I need to put a two right there. All right, and that will do the trick. So we are balanced now. So that takes care of 13.1. The main purpose was to help, help you remember how to do a formation reaction, a decomposition reaction, uh, an acid, base reaction, and then what side does the energy go on? If it's exothermic, the right side. If it's endothermic, the left side. All right, let's look at page two of your notes. I'm just going through these. Just quickly, you can certainly read the chapter and read through this yourself. Determining delta H using bond energy. So we're going to be looking at table one of our, um, of our chapter 13 tables when we do the math on this. But energy is absorbed when bonds are broken and released when bonds form. In an endothermic reaction, if more energy is absorbed, more energy is absorbed when reactant bonds are broken than released when product bonds formed, so that causes, if more energy has to be absorbed from the reactants, then that causes a loss of heat. Okay, and an exothermic, so the surroundings get colder. Exothermic reaction, more energy is released when bonds form than absorbed when bonds are broken. So that, in order to conserve energy, uh, heat has to be released to the surroundings or the atmosphere. All right, and so the delta H equation for bond energies. All right, delta H is going to be equal to the energy of the reactants minus the energy of the products. This is the only equation in this entire chapter where you, do, where you will do reactants minus product. So let's look at on your own 13.2. All right, this is quite a few pages over. So we're on page 428. So reading through that it says hydrochloric acid is widely used as a cleaning agent in both home and industrial use. To make HCl, chemists react hydrogen gas and chlorine gas at high temperatures. What's the delta H of this pro, uh, process? Is it exothermic or endothermic? So we're making HCl. We just have to read through the problem so we can get the chemical equation. Hydrogen gas is just going to be H2. Chlorine gas, chlorine is a homonuclear diatomic, so that would be Cl2. And that's going to make HCl, and we need a two in front of HCl. Now, 
I'm not really worried about the phases. We don't need to know the phases using the bond energy method. We do in the next method, though. So what we need to do with the bond energy method is draw the Lewis structure of each of these compounds. So for H2, it's going to be a single bond, H to SH. So you have to remember your chapter 8, your chapter 9. Okay, for Cl2, it's going to be a Cl, Cl. Now, chlorine has seven valence electrons. You don't really need the dots here. Uh, we just really need to know what kind of bond. It's going to be a single bond. Remember, you need to add up to eight valence electrons. Hydrogen only needs two. And then for HCl, hydrogen can only take a single bond. Okay, so that's what we're looking at from a Lewis structure standpoint. So delta H, now we're going to use where the energy of the reactants minus the energy of the products. All right, so delta H, we have an, if you'll look on your chapter 13 tables, we want to find an H dash H bond. Okay, so it's the, the top right there, and the bond energy is 432 kilojoules per mole. Now you do use the coefficient, that coefficient is one. Uh, so we will have one mole and we have 432 kilojoules per mole from the table. Plus for chlorine, we have one mole of chlorine. Again, that's that one mole is just comes from the uh, coefficient. A Cl dash Cl bond, right? Cl dash Cl, right here, 240. And then we're going to subtract out two moles. Why do I use the two? That's the coefficient. You do have to have a balanced equation. An H dash Cl bond in your table is 428. All right, so delta H is equal to 1 times 432 is 432. 1 times 240 plus 240, and then 2 times 428 is going to be uh, minus 856. So that's negative 184. What's the unit? Well, you have moles and kilojoules per mole, so the moles will cancel, leaving kilojoules. So that's delta H, and it's negative, so it's exothermic. This reaction heats up the surroundings. All right, that is 13.2. Go ahead and pause the video. If you're still writing 13.3, uh, I'm going to need uh, more of the board here. So. Okay, 13.3 says in an acetylene torch. C2H2 is burned to make hot, make the hot blue flame that cuts or welds metal. Assuming that the combustion is complete, what is the delta H of this reaction? So we have a complete combustion reaction. C2H2, what do you add to that in a complete combustion? You add O2. And the products are CO2 plus H2O. Now we do have to balance this, okay? So I am going to to go through the balancing process to remind you how to do that, but I will be erasing, so you may want to wait until the end to write. Okay, so I have two carbons here, so I'm going to put a two right there. Uh, I have, let's see, uh, that gives me four oxygens, so I'm going to try See, I've got five oxygen, so I need a five halves right there. Okay, so five halves times two is five, and I have two times two is four, plus one, five. Uh, everything else is balanced. We have two hydrogens, two hydrogens. So we need to clear the fraction by multiplying everything by two. So that'll give me a two. 
five, four, and a two. And I'm gonna scratch that out so I don't accidentally, accidentally, uh, so two, five, four, and two. So I'm gonna have to get the Lewis structure. Well, carbon's always gonna be in the center, so we'll have a carbon and a carbon, and the two hydrogens can only take a single bond so that leaves a triple bond. O2, you might remember, has a double bond. Okay, you don't need uh, the dots, but remember oxygen has six valence electrons. It can take a double bond. CO2, you have carbon in the middle and two double bonded oxygens. And then H2O, we have oxygen in the middle and two single bonds. Okay, so let's get delta H. Energy of the reactant minus the energy of the products. All right, so delta H is going to be equal to, so we have two moles. And for this C2H2, I've got two C dash H bonds and one C triple bond C. So I'm not going to show you the, the table each time, but I'm looking at two C dash, dash H's, so that's 411, and one C triple bond C, which is at the bottom, 835. Okay, so I'm just going to write that out as 411 plus 835 plus 411. Again, where did I get those numbers from? There there, and there. All right, I've got five moles of O2 and an O double bond O is 494. And that's kilojoules per mole. I didn't put the unit on the last one. Let's subtract out the product. So four moles we have an O double bond C. I've got two of those. Okay, so look at that. Look at that in the table. But each one of those is seven ninety nine. Okay, each one we have two, and then minus two moles. Two H dash O bonds. Each one is four fifty nine. Each one of those is 459. Okay, hard to get to all that on my little board, uh, but those numbers, if you multiply all that out, okay, 2 times 411 plus 835 plus 411, you've got 3314 plus 2470 minus 6392. That's this quantity here. 4 times 799 plus 799 minus 1836. And that'll give you negative 2444 kilojoules. Okay, so that is exothermic. I hope it makes sense that it's exothermic. You are burning something, so of course it's going to release heat to the surroundings. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and stop the lecture here. Normally in class, I would do a couple of more example problems, but uh, we'll, we'll catch that with another video. All that you can do right now is review questions on page 456. You can do one and two, and the practice problems on the next page you can really only do number one right now. Okay, so again, in the classroom lecture, I would continue on, but I'm gonna go ahead and stop this video and we'll pick up um, in, in uh, video number two, uh, the Delta H uh, using um, Hess's law. All right, so that's it for this video. I'll see you next video.